What's going on, y'all? This is Rob with Cinema Bullies. Um, today I'm going to talk about something that I've been saying more often and people have been talking about and been voicing their opinions and calling people out a little bit more on it. But, um, and it's been going, you know, been going on and on for years, every, ever since I got into this. But, um, people that you guys praise and, you know, give them all kinds of respect and clout and, you know, credit for stuff that they just got lucky doing, um, it's just, it's ridiculous and just, it's, it's very humorous to me, or, and, and people like me, because, you know, you guys give all these people all this type of credit that's not due in any way, shape, or form. And they Photoshop their dogs. And it's, it's, it's ridiculous. You got people, you know, seeing these dogs in real life and they'll video them and then you'll see the video and then you'll see the guy post or the woman post pictures of the dog. And that dog looks like it's double the size of the dog you saw at the show. So, yeah, angles and great cameras and all that stuff plays a factor into it also. But you can't really double a dog's size just from a picture or an angle. Um, so, therefore, the only thing that can explain that is that the dog is photoshopped. Um, I've seen a couple people calling out. It's a couple people about photoshopping their dogs, and it's 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 great. I love it because you know you got honest people that post cell phone pictures like somebody like me, and you see what my dogs look like, and they look good. I mean, they don't look like crazy, you know, extreme looking dogs, or and they don't look photoshopped at all by any means. But everyone that's seen my dogs in person say that the pictures don't do them justice from pictures to person and I'm um, you know I explain to them that I just don't take high quality pictures um, I did one photo shoot with obsidian and uh, Queen of the damned and got some good pictures um, from somebody that's a photographer and all he did was edit the coloring he didn't edit the dogs and he sent them back to me within two days so it's not like he uh, had a long time to play with it and the pictures came out great. And the dogs look definitely um, enhanced just from a better camera. Uh, but I openly post videos and pictures of my dogs all the time. So you see what you see and that's what it is. I don't have to Photoshop nothing. I don't gotta uh, fix my dog's eye color like some guys do. You know, you got guys that have dogs with two eye colors like blue and brown and decide uh, later on down the line that oh that's a fault so let me photoshop that and make the dog have two brown eyes but then you look at their pictures from the past and the dog got a blue eye and the dog got a brown eye so I'm not talking about his asshole so but his um but that's just funny to me like <laughs> like how are you changing the dog's eye color too it's already bad enough that you double the dog size and pictures just to sell more stud credits and promote yourself and plain and simple a lot of these big name dogs that you guys sweat and and give all this clout to the owners and this and that um half the people didn't produce their dogs they bought them they are bought dogs they did not break down pedigrees they didn't do no line breeding they didn't do no inbreeding. They didn't try to purify the blood before taking it out to something else or purify, enhance it, you know, whatever you want to call it, um, line breeding. Getting the best traits of that dog, strong and true. So when it gets bred to something else, those positive traits carry on to whatever you're outcrossing it to, which would be, in my case, I'm going to be doing it to more bullier dogs. So hopefully I get the correctness, the good health, with a little bit more bullier structure and thickness to my dogs and width. I mean, I do lack width, but like I said, I critique my dogs 
worse than people that critique my dogs. So, you know, you guys that watch my channel and, you know, met me in person, I'm straight up, cut and dry. Um, I'm cool. I mean, I'll talk to anybody about dogs anytime. You guys can hit me up. And um, I'm more than willing to talk about dogs and, you know, what I think you should do and how you, what you should do. And, you know, like I said, I'm a firm believer. And, you know, everyone says all oh, my productions and this and that. It ain't your really, it's not your production, really. And you can't take that much credit for anything that you guys do unless you got four generations or more with your kennel name in front of it. Then after that, those dogs off of that, you can take some credit for. I mean, that's your that's what you your vision you bred you inbred line bred to get a product of what you saw fit for your program and what you were trying to achieve. So therefore, I would say you take full credit for then that's your productions. No nobody else helped you. No one else is involved in it, and you did it. And then when you outcross it. That's your production. Um, as long as, you know, it's, you know, you have that, I would say you, I would only breed like the males that I have and take credit for it if I approve the females. If I don't approve the females, I, then it's kind of like, you know, why do it? So then I wouldn't really take as much credit but, you know, people, you know, throw money at you for stud credits, you're going to sell them. Um, but that's the problem with the community as a whole, that we just sell, 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 and don't try to breed the best. And that's the problem. Um, I'm still fairly new, so I'm breed. I've, I, and I've only bred my males. I bred Furion three times, and obsidian once and that's all I got and I got I believe one breeding coming up and I don't promote my dogs like crazy I don't photoshop them like I don't do none of that crazy stuff that these people are doing just to basically set you up and get you to use their stuff and then you guys wonder why your dogs come out the way they do because especially when you're bringing it to a whole other outcross of a of a dog, because most of these big name dogs are outcross dogs, so therefore they're not going to hold true to what they throw. Most of them, most of them will not throw their look. There are very few that do, and you know who they are. And there's some you know proven producers, and there's like I said, I only know about four. I mean that's like. And two of them are lime, I believe they're lime bred. So they, they throw more true. And then two of them are out crosses and they just are lucky and they throw their look. And that's why I said it comes down to luck. But the photoshopping, man, you guys gotta stop with that shit. Because bro, people like me are gonna start calling all y'all out and we're gonna have to do stack offs or bring back some old school stuff and really stop this like it's basically like fraud almost like you you suckering people all these new people that get into this and then they skip out on good breeders that actually know what they're doing with their line breeding and in breedings and you know and have better healthy dogs that don't die before they're two like a lot of these people are breeding and it's because you guys are breeding dogs that have health defects and don't care so um, like I said stop with the Photoshop and just post some raw cell phone pictures man Stop taking, I mean, I get you guys are marketing, you guys are selling your dogs, like, you know, trying to sell stud credits and puppies and stuff, but eventually it's going to catch up to you. There's plenty of guys that it caught up to already that don't get that much business, you don't hear their names, you know, spoken about as much, 
and it's because they're producing classic style dogs or shit dogs with health problems and you know their business is getting exposed about how they breed dogs with defects and health issues and they just don't care there's a lot of dirt on a lot of people and a lot of people know dirt on people it just takes that one time to set somebody's switch off to get it all exposed so be careful look at the dogs in person before you guys even buy stud credits because if not you're just wasting your money you're wasting your time and that's what we can't get back is time and in this dog game you gotta make every minute count every year goes by quick and like I said it takes at least five years to even establish a program I'm about to be at my five year mark I believe this upcoming winter so and I'm pretty much almost there to only do what I want in my yard until I'm ready to outcross them. So take your time, don't rush, don't buy just the big name stuff because you think it's gonna benefit you and then you get mad when you have a classic dog instead of a dog that looks extreme or you know like the father or mother. So take some notes, hope this helped you guys out, hope this opens your eyes and like I said, see these dogs in person and get cell phone shots. It'll change your mind. All right? <clears throat> Look, take care. Like, subscribe, comment, and uh, hit me up if you want to talk uh, on Instagram, Cinema Bullies, TikTok. I'm on there too. And also Facebook. And uh, let me know what you guys think. All right. Later, guys.